Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video. In this video, I'm gonna touch up on to a very different subject, but I am getting this in a lot of comments and a lot of emails. So that is why we need to take care of this topic, which is the best programming laptop that you can buy, or in other words, which is the best laptop that you can buy for the coding purposes. So we are gonna answer that in much detail in this video. So let's get started here. In this channel, we talk about programming, web apps, mobile apps, and developing and designing all of such things and everything related to technology. So in case you are new here, consider subscribing. In today's video, I want to talk about a very different and very subjective topic, which is the best laptop that you can buy for programming purposes. Now, let's get started by saying that uh, if you can afford the best laptop with i7 processor, heaviest possible graphic card, lots of RAMs, then of course it's not a problem, it's not a question for you. But for the rest of the guys, let's try to answer what should be the best laptop that you can buy for coding purposes or programming purposes. Now the first thing is that whether do you have existing laptop or you want to just buy your first one, then it's gonna be again a different question. Now, a lot of people, a lot of college going students want to just buy a laptop because they want to play games on that. Now, if you are on that case, go ahead, buy a new laptop, which is high end there. There is no point of discussion with you because you obviously want to play a lot of games on that and that's fine, completely okay. This is, uh, don't just say that, hey, I want to do programming on that too, as, a, as well as I want to play high-end games on that. That's not a discussion at all. You are just completely different from a gen genre. And you might want to watch some other videos which talks about the high-end game computers or uh, just stuff like that. So go ahead, do that. Now for the rest of the people, let's get started by making a few notes that what kind of programming wa you want to do on your laptop. So getting started with that, now, before we even also begin with that, let me tell you that whatever laptop you want to buy is actually slightly out of your budget and that's completely okay. It happens to all of us. We are humans and it is in our nature that we always want to buy the stuff which is little bit out of our reach and that's okay. It's completely okay. We will have to adjust a little bit uh, lower than that. So keep in mind in that that whatever laptop you really want to buy is a little bit out of your reach. So that's okay, it's, it happens all over the globe. It's not about you. Now coming back onto the point, start making notes on what kind of laptop you want to buy. Now first point is whether in the nearby future you want to do some kind of iOS development or not. Whether in the nearby future you might, you slightly might want to go in designing the iOS app or the apps for uh, the MacBook or just like that or watch apps or something like that. In case you have slightly mind of that, no question at all, just buy a Mac device there. It might be a MacBook Air, it might be a MacBook Pro or the cheapest option is Mac Mini, you can go for that. Now keep in mind when you go and visit to the store, the Mac Mini is going to be your cheapest option because uh, it's just a CPU there and obviously it's going to cost you a little bit extra onto the screen, the keyboard and the mouse, but still it's a Mac uh, running an OS X that can be really helpful while designing the iOS apps. Now in case you are onto the other range, the else case, uh, who really don't want to go for the iOS app or something, then obviously you can leave the Mac uh, because it's an expensive thing and not everybody can afford that. But again, uh, make sure that if you can afford, it's a good piece of hardware, great performance. Uh, but again, obviously you have to adjust a little bit onto the Mac environment, which is not at all tough. It's much more easier than the Windows, consider this. And it's much more easier. So don't just get afraid that I don't want to go for the Mac and just like that. Okay, that's enough of the Mac. I'm not gonna talk about the Mac uh, much more that, uh, because I think uh, all the people who I wanted to convince that yes, it's a good machine are already there. Now let's talk about what kind of rest of the programming you want to do. Now, if in your programming, it's gonna be a lot of usage of heavy end softwares like Maya 3D or for the rendering of your scenes, you might want to go into game development or uh, mobile game development or mobile app development, uh, just like that, these are your field. You definitely need a good hardware there. The hardware should at least have uh, one gigabyte of graphic cards and at least 
uh, 4 or preferably 8 gigabytes of RAM there. This is the minimum requirement. On the hard disk size, uh, I would say you can go for whatever the minimum is there, but in case uh, there is an option of SSD available or a fusion drive is available, go ahead for that. Obviously, it's going to cost you a little bit more money. But again, if in case your programming is going to be related to some kind of game development, you need your hardware to be high end because there is a lot of rendering being done, lot of processing being done. With that, I would also say that on those machines uh, running the softwares like Adobe Photoshop or InDesign or maybe Illustrator is comparatively easy and fast uh, working there. But again, in case you are not in that genre and you'll be designing a lot of websites in PHP, ASP, Python or maybe C, C++, Java, just like that programmers, you don't need that kind of uh, expensive hardware. You can just go for four gigs of RAM and that's it. You don't need any graphic card, although it would be great, but you can just work without graphic card as well. So any laptop which is good for browsing purposes is gonna be good in case you are designing uh, simply websites in PHP or WordPress or just like that. So it's completely okay. Now also with that, I would like to touch upon the Android developers as well. Now people might be thinking, hey, I'm, I might want to go into the Android development. What kind of hardware should I buy? For Android guys, I would say graphic card is again an essential requirement for you. Although uh, on to the official people say, hey, you can just go without that as well, but I, I don't believe so. It's not at all possible to work smoothly without the graphic card. On the RAM side, I would say go for the eight gigabytes of the RAM. Although in my official video series on the YouTube as well or the official documentation, it says three gigs or four gigs is completely okay. But trust me, when you run the simulators, a couple of simulators, obviously you will be testing your app uh, onto a couple of devices at least. Uh, then running these apps or switching between the simulator is not at all fun in three gigs of the RAM or four gigs of the RAM. So for the app development, for the game development, it's, it's needed that you need to have a little bit high end of the computer. Now, I know uh, buying a hardware is not the cheapest option and especially in the college days, it's not easy, it's not affordable. But I personally believe that uh, while buying a new hardware is not an expense, it's an investment that you are making on yourself. As soon as you learn that, uh, you can just pay on the installments, just buy a laptop uh, on the investment, on the installments, and later on you can learn to design your own apps or websites, do a little bit of the freelancing and can pay off that. It's, it's really that easy. But again, I completely do agree. Buying a new hardware is not that easy. It's a little bit confusing, but I would say don't go for the company specifics. Look out for what specifications you are looking for. Don't go that Asus is better than HP or HP is better than Sony or Sony is better than Dell. Uh, at the end of the day, what you are paying for is the internal hardware that you're looking for. So don't go for the brandish thing. Go for what you really need. And again, uh, if you are a Windows fan, go for the Windows. If you're a Mac fan, go for the Mac fan, uh, Mac kind of a stuff. But again, make sure they also understand one thing that whenever you buy a Windows laptop or something, look out for the costs that are extra there. Now, I never ever recommend the pirated softwares and everything. So go ahead, include the cost of your Windows uh, 8, 9, 10, I guess 9 is not there, 8 or 10, whatever you are planning to buy your Microsoft Office if you are planning to buy that as well as uh, some kind of other softwares like Photoshop or whatever you are trying to buy, make sure you include that cost as well. I know I have talked quite a lot about the laptops in this video, specifically about uh, the programming. I hope this video helped you to sort out a few things, but again, my advice would be make notes on what kind of development you want to do and surely you can discuss in the comment section below or can uh, drop me a mail or Facebook so that we can make more videos about your specific problems as well. With this, I would say if you have enjoyed this video, then make sure you give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel as well. And if you think that this video can be helpful for someone, then make sure you share it on your social accounts as well.